Welcome to the channel. This is Fridays with Brandon, and this is going to be different than a normal Friday video. We're actually going to do a whole series um, with a guest speaker, Jim Newell from Tech Support. I'm going to bring him in in one second. And uh, the two of us are going to do a whole series on the scope meters, which I think are going to be very interesting for you guys. So let me bring Jim in, and then we'll introduce the three videos. Hi, Jim, and welcome. Hey, brother. How's it going this morning? It's going well. So uh, what we're going to go through today is we are going to go through uh, the intro to the three videos and then do the first video in this one and then hit the next two in the next day or two, they will drop. So first video, what we're going to do is talk about the Fluke scope meters, the 190 series. We're going to talk about the difference between the series three and the series two. Uh, the current model is the Series 3 mm -hmm. as of early 2024, and we're going to talk about those differences and a few pro trips. Then uh, video two will be about how to do a pass-fail and let your scope meter just kind of run for a day or a week and only capture that which does not look like a normal waveform that you've been looking at. And then the third video is going to be about how to get the data off and how to make a report if that's something that you'd be interested in. So look for those next two videos, but let's jump into this one. So Jim, why don't you kick us off? You are with Tech Support at Fluke, long time. How long have you been at Fluke now? Um, I, I Right out of high school, I started working at Fluke in, in manufacturing, so that was in 79. So I'm coming up on my 45th year here at Fluke. There we 20, go. 20 something years in Tech Support. Okay, well, we want to get these videos recorded before your uh, knowledge decides to retire. Right. <laughs> um, so that's what, that's my motivation for these videos. So why don't you share with us the the Series 3 has recently come out in the last year or so. Why mm -hmm. don't you tell us what are some of the differences that you see in the two? I know there's not much, but share with us. Yeah, so the the primary reason for the uh, the next generation was quite frankly the the second generation the displays that we're using uh, the technology was not as good as what we can get today. So we put a new um, display or higher resolution uh, display on the scope meters. Uh, they're still color, so that's really cool. Uh, the other thing is that uh, that you can now use a uh, thumb drive uh, input connection to put a Wi-Fi dongle in there. And the scope meter has a uh, Wi-Fi button. It looks like the Fluke Connect. It has a little F with like shock waves coming off of it to turn the Wi-Fi on and off. And so what I mean by Wi-Fi, it's not like you're getting on a network, but you're just trying to communicate with your laptop and upload data from the scope meter to your PC. And you can use like Fluke View um, 2 software is what you'd be using with the Series 2 uh, okay. or Series 3 scope meters. Can I, can I interrupt you for a second there, Jim? Sure. So when it comes to Fluke Connect, because it has a Fluke Connect button on it now, does that mean it talks to the Fluke Connect app? Or is it just meaning in general, Fluke Connect, it's got wireless capability? Um, it, it's a twofold uh, answer, uh, Brandon. So uh, primarily, I use it um, when I want to upload data, because you can use a USB cable as well. Um, or a thumb drive you can plug in there too, this USB stick um, or the Wi-Fi dongle. And so um, if you do use the Wi-Fi dongle and turn it on uh, and you look into your laptop, it'll show up as a scope meter as a Wi-Fi hotspot. But if you use your cell phone, it will also show up and you can uh, select it as a Wi-Fi hotspot and then the Fluke Connect app does work. But the um, there's no transfer of data. It's just screenshots of what you're looking at. And you can save the screen images, but uh, no data transfer to your phone as far as waveform data is. That That's strictly going to be for your PC. Okay. So will you get the full screen of the scope on your phone through Fluke yes. Connect? Or will that's you only get the number that you're measuring? No, you get the... The, the actual screen of your waveform, uh, the whole oh, the scope, scope screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, the, You're saying the, the, uh, the dongle and the Wi-Fi, and obviously it's repeating you, but it 
when we say the Wi-Fi, it's not like you're getting on the internet with this thing. It is oh, becoming right. its own right. hotspot. It's a one-to-one connection between you and the PC or you and the phone. And it's just a data highway, essentially, or a cable, yeah. a virtual cable. Yeah, that's one of the things that people can get confused on is they, they'll think that, oh, you have to get on a network and you don't. So that I think it's good to tackle that question right off the bat. It's just been peer-to-peer is a term I use. Laptop to okay. the scope meter, not a network. Perfect. And then and that's it, really. I mean, yeah, they're series yeah. two. If if they have a series two, keep using it. It's phenomenal. Unless the the wireless capability is something that motivates you to move to the next one. Um, I I do think there's a couple things that I didn't always realize is that the series two and the series three, and you mentioned this you can use a USB flash drive just into the site. So you don't have to actually connect them to a PC and make sure the driver's downloaded. So your PC recognizes it. Right. Um, yeah. That correct? Yeah, that's right. So um, there's two things you can do. You can either have a waveform shown and save it as a screen. So a screen is like a bitmap directly to the thumb drive, um, or you can save it as a, uh, a .csv file. And the .csv file that the scope meter uh, crates can either be um, used with Excel, just like you'd expect, but Fluke View 2 um, also can open up those uh, waveforms and show it like it would if you're transferring via USB cable um, or the Wi Fi connection where you're getting uh, scope record files, trend plot files, single shot waveforms. Those, those all can be saved as CSVs. Okay. Okay, excellent. And, and, and to the thumb drive, and then you, you can leave the scope out in the field, bring the thumb drive back to your office, slide it into your PC, and do the analysis without the scope even being there. Okay, beautiful. And then um, I know that with the Series 2, I always recommended, and with all scope meters, I always recommend people reset to factory default every time oh, yeah. they turn it off because of a Somebody else has used theirs with either a different probe and it has a different ratio or they've messed with the setting. You might not even get to see a waveform. Um, I assume you can still do, do that with the Series 3. And is it any different than the Series 2? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we talked about that a little bit earlier um, before the video is that we've moved a button um, or we've added a button and moved the one that was previously there on the scope meter. The user button moved from the bottom right hand corner over uh, to the left above the power button to make way for the, the Wi-Fi button, the Flute Connect button there. Um, but yeah, you can still do the master reset factory settings by um, meter being off, um, push and hold the user button, and then push the power button, and you'll get two quick beeps that'll go beep beep, and then the display will come on and that has put the tool back to factory default. Um, but also an included, uh, is that if you don't want to do a reset in that manner, if the scope meter is on, you can go into the um, a menu and uh, go to user options, as it's called, and then uh, there will be a factory default choice in the menu. So there's okay. two ways of doing that now. In the past, we haven't done that. It's always been yeah. holding the user button down. Yeah, and we can show that in the user manual. Right now, I just pulled up the user manual, and you can show the image of where the dongle would be pushed in. I guess scroll down just a little, Jim. Oh yeah, sorry. Let me catch up with you. There we go. Yep. So you yeah. can see where the dongle would go in there. You can highlight that with the mouse if you want, Jim, and then where you're going to push the button, where the button yeah. is. For the yeah, the button. button's down here in the corner. I, I guess I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's there we go. Here. Maybe even. Yeah. Just a sec with me. Yep. So that's the that's a Flute Connect icon there. That's down here in the bottom right to turn the yep. Wi-Fi on. And this is the dongle. And this is a um, off-the-shelf dongle, by the way. Um, there's a company called D-Link. So it's D-L-I-N-K, and the model number is called the DWA-131. And so if somebody has a Series Three and they lose it, they can replace it. But their Series 3 should come with that if it's in a country we have that we do Fluke Connect with. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, the 
product manager, when they introduce the scope meter, they have it in two different packages. So each model number has two packages. Uh, one that's packaged with the Fluke V2 software and the Wi-Fi dongle and a hard carrying case. And then the other model number uh, doesn't. So it's it's a cost savings uh, idea um, okay. so that you can you know make that decision. But regardless, like you said, and the the dongles, the D Link, I think they're like twenty five or thirty dollars. They're not very expensive, so that's that's pretty nice. Okay, excellent. And then um, why don't you scroll down to the uh, default factory reset? And then I I just wanted to share the other thing that's really slick about the 190 series that's different than like maybe a bench top scope meter that sets these things apart is all of these channel channels are isolated independent floating channels which is a bunch of big words that mean nothing to most normal people but right. what what that says is you can take because each test probe is going to have a grounding clip so you can have grounding clip on phase one and then the test probe on phase two for your line one, for your first channel. And then you can take the grounding clip from phase two or the, the channel two, you can take that ground clip, clip it on phase two, and then put your test lead from channel two on phase three. What yep. that ends up doing is you have a ground clip on phase one and phase two. If you had a bench top scope, you just created a dead short and you're gonna blow yourself up. Well, maybe yep. not yourself, but you're gonna blow the meter up. Still for sure, yeah. Um, so that's why you, the 190 series is so important in that industrial environment because it is category rated and there's no way you can hook it up with the grounds in a way that is going to cause a dead short within the meter. So I just wanted to highlight that one of the differences that. Yeah, that, that's does. on the 190 series from the beginning. That's always been the case, the isolated input. So yeah, good point, Brandon. It's, it's really good to bring that up because safety is a primary thing for fluke we we want people to be safe in the environment when they're making the measurements so good call out and then as far as the factor <clears throat> being set he he just um oh no maybe this is not where we're at tell us what you're, you're looking at here Jim. oh um i uh, we had talked earlier about uh one of the the features is to um get the uh data uh to a csv format so That's I just right. thought I would go in here and, and just uh, show the manual where it talks about that you can save the data as a .csv format on this USB stick. And then as it says, you can look at it in Fluke View or the uh, to the Excel spreadsheet. Excellent. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm going to share my screen just because I think there's value in making sure that if you don't know where you might get a user manual, you can go to fluke.com, click your country and whatnot. And then right here, I'm at the 190 series three, go down here and I can click on these tabs, users and manuals right here. And this is where you can download them. So that's where you have access to those things. I think that concludes this video for the series two versus series three and some pro tips. Be looking for the next two videos because if you are a pro user, these next two videos could be really beneficial and will give you really extreme pro tips on those. So thanks, Jim, for your time. Looking forward to it. You betcha, Brandon. Take yep. care. Take care. Bye-bye.